How far will your train be from theirs? I've never seen the place myself, but not far. We will be in a siding. They will have the main line. In a train, in a forest. That's right. Be careful of forests, Bosch. Forests are full of omens. Ivy, for example. It cleans the forest floor. It keeps down the corpses of the autumn. It keeps down fallen deer. And soldiers. There are no dead soldiers in that forest. I know. Forests don't frighten me. We have triumphed, Kemoso. We will have our way. I don't think we have much to fear. Damned liar. I can't understand it. I'm no cabinet minister. Why me? Well, I don't know. Why me? General Gröner and Field Marshal von Hindenburg have been called to see the Kaiser. They are driving up to the Chateau de la Freineuse. I will see that breakfast is brought to you. Uh, and some more schnapps, please. We'll be in the lounge. I'm in there. You know, they didn't even send a car to the station. I had to commandeer a lorry. I know. We'll have to make sure they don't treat us with contempt. Oh, don't worry. I think some of these bastards will resist the idea of an armistice. Any one of us could be a target. Go armed amongst strangers. Get rid of it. Anybody could see that. So? We have been promised the gratitude of the German people. Words. You're a politician, you know about words. What are you carrying? Protection? Nothing. Didn't occur to me. I'll get you one. I'll lift one from one of these officers here. They're all half drunk. Captain Vanslow, high seas fleet. I know who you gentlemen are. Vanslow, you're from Kiel. Yes, sir. I arrived on Tuesday. So I just happened to be at hand for a delegation. Well, uh, sit down. Thanks. So, you saw what happened at Kiel? I heard the shooting. Our Marines were shooting our sailors. Uh, here. There was a plan to see. Thank you. I will pour the schnapps. The plan was to sail out against the British fleet, to try and break the blockade. The sailors got word of it and were calling it a death run. Perceptive, I 
They said they'd stopped the engines. The officers, all of us, armed ourselves. Then we decided to pipe all hands on deck. Sailors never disobey that. I'm not an artistic man. But that was the height of art for me. Sailors answering the pipe. Yes, I understand. That morning, they disobeyed the order. You know, the British have been lusting for you to come out. You'd all be dead by now. Excuse me. The schnapps has a laxative effect. I sent you her, Hitzberger. Yes, General, I was sent for. I've been here an hour. But at your ease, I hope. I have been in attendance at the Chateau since the small hours. Yes, I know that, General. Well, we don't have very much time for the briefing. Poor Willie. He should throw in the crown. It's pitiful. You see those officers there? I got them together and put to them two questions. First, if the Kaiser were to lead a final assault on enemy positions, would it be obeyed? Second, can the troops be relied on to suppress Bolshevism? Or in real terms, shoot down seditious Germans? Only one out of 30 of them answered yes to both questions. These men have become totally unpredictable. The important thing, Itzberger, is to get an immediate ceasefire. If you can. Are there no specifics? Send the details of the terms back to us. We'll forward them to the Chancellor and keep you informed. Oh, Matthias. Yes? You have my respect. Thank you. Oh, 
Uh, Jesuit educated. Commission calls artillery. Attended cavalry school. I should skim, George. Yes, sir. And please, call me Rosie. Rosie. Yes, skim, old man. It's the insights what you want. Yes, uh, commander of French 9th Army on Mars, August 1914. Contribution crucial in turning German flanker. Sorry, Rosie, I'll, I'll get there. Quanti generalissimo, allied forces, brief analysis. In accordance with his temperament, the marshal sees war as a moral and mystical exercise. In some ways, too, his ideas of the meaning of the war based on the French defeat by the Prussians in 1870. Yes, you see, he's obsessed with French territorial gains. Forced quite a lot of concessions on Lloyd George and Kay Dossé. It's a replayed tournament for him. Should have to stand firm on the naval clauses. Percy Lorbeams? Very happy. Sir, we have glimpsed each other across the conference table at Cade or say. I have not forgotten. Introduce me to your colleague. Admiral George Hope. Sir. Ah, yes, Hope. You're a long way from the sea, gentlemen. Still, the sea is there. I did not mean to be argumentative, I just remarked. Have you eaten? Thank you, but we had a picnic basket in the back of the car. How jolly. Yes, yes, very pleasant. These are our brothers from the fleet of the British Navy. Please make sure they are given every comfort. Oh, one moment, please. I must impress upon you the seriousness of the naval demands. I do have the copy of what Mr. Lloyd George wants. That is serious enough for me. I will impress the terms upon the Germans. The spirit in which they're put, Marshal. Not that I... Um... I will not put it to them for the fun of it, Lord Reams. But you are the one who knows boats. Might I at least ask where the armistice is to take place? Yes, yes, of course. The place is the forest of Compiègne, in a railway siding. The saloon car for them is one which belonged to Napoleon III. Excellent. And do we know who their delegates will be? My chief of staff will tell you their names. I've forgotten them myself. I'm told one of them is a socialist who makes peace speeches. In any event, they are nobody I've heard of. Gentlemen. Would you gentlemen care for a glass of cognac? Alfred, Groner is here. He says the Kaiser no longer has the army's support. He'll have to abdicate, Alfred. Oh. Can I get you something binding? No, no. Don't rush me. Wasn't my intention.
Pornography, you know. Like most respectable men. I knew his supplier. He said Villy's tastes were restrained. Boots and a little flagellation. And a leaning towards knee dresses. But nothing very unseemly. He said the nation could be proud of Villy's tastes. What is it, Alfred? What's the matter with you? Go and straighten yourself up. Look, we are not private men now, please remember that. We are government delegates. Are we? Four municipal cretins could manage it. Oh, hi, Herzberger. I'm afraid we'll have to discuss the briefing later, a little behind schedule. Yes, yes. I have followed your career with interest, Herzberger. Oh, yes. All those peace speeches in the Reichstag. I hope they will impress the French. Well, let's hope so. Herr Herzberger, your transport is now ready for you. I want to appreciate it. I can handle all communications with Foch. I don't insist on very much, but I want it appreciated that I am president of this delegation. I've sat at the same table as Foch at least a dozen times. This meeting will have strange overtones. I think perhaps I should travel alone. I have special instructions from the field marshal which I should read and consider in private. Thank you. Russian, no doubt. Former military attaché in Paris. Francophile. Speaks French at home to a French wife. It may count for something. to get rid of that. The French will search us. No, they won't. We're diplomats. It's for our people. Our people at the front. Some of those bastards will shoot at the white flag. It's not much fun, is it? It's not much fun. You can send the driver back for another car. Feel free to share my car while we wait. No, no, we should go on. We must keep moving. That's stupid. We'll be cramped to death. This is not a stroll to the Bois de Boulogne. I need a car to myself. No, you'll have to share with Vancelot. An omen. Damned rotten omen. Nonsense. Where I come from, they don't believe in such things. Sod what they do where you come from. son would have been that age.
Compiègne. Jean d'Arc, a little general, captured there. Dragged off a horse by the railway bridge there. She knew how to make people swallow things whole. Yes, well, I'm afraid I don't have that trick, sir. But I have instructions to stick by the naval clauses as they stand in the agenda. The disarmament of every ship and the internment of all the larger vessels. Perhaps you don't understand. You British are a very political race. Reasonable. You always want to make arrangements. We, on the other hand, we will never make arrangements with the enemy. When we get him at this table, we will make him choke down all the terms of the gulp. Like Jean d'Arc, perhaps? Yes. Yeah. The lady is true to the French temperament. Well, that's all very well, but the German delegates are free men. How do you ever intend to make them swallow things whole? We will do it by the dominance of our ideas concerning the true nature of the event. We shall do it through a harmonious proportion between spiritual and bodily elements. I'm sorry, I don't follow that. It will happen. They need the peace. We don't need it as they do. They will swallow it whole because I will demand it of them. I shall not accept the hypothesis of failure. I think we've arrived, gentlemen. I must go and inspect the hors d'oeuvre in the dining car. Only the finest will do for my British brothers. your guns. We're on our way to arrange a truce with the enemy. Put down your guns! I don't believe that. Search them for weapons. I am Matthias Esberger. I'm leading a delegation to seek an armistice with the French. Will you please take us to your battalion headquarters, please? Will you take us to your battalion headquarters, please? We fell the forest to make these roadblocks. Worked ourselves to the bone. All the logs must be taken down. When we sign an armistice, all the roadblocks will come down. You'll have to go some other way. General von Winterfeld. We are on our way to arrange a truce with the enemy. It is imperative the roadblocks are removed. Communication is breaking down. Colonel, I must insist these Please blocks are taken down. To me. The French have nominated the Chimay Road for a ceasefire in two hours' time. Just that road. Go through to your division headquarters, please. insist that I undertake all communications with the military. Very well, but stop being so damn pompous. Herr Erzberger, I must point out that you are not the only one who opposed this war. I have been against it since 1914. Yes, but for what reason do you think, General? This war seems to have run through your marriage bed, doesn't it? Sir. Perhaps you can tell me, sir. 
what is happening inside our country. There are rumors that there will be a general strike starting on Friday. That's tomorrow. There are Soviets already in Kiel, Dusseldorf. Don't the dead mean anything to them? You see, it's happening here. These casualty figures are accurate. But they could only have been caused by some enormous battle. Desertion is a word I will not countenance. I tell my officers to mark down the disasters as dead. It is a spiritually exact description. Friends must forgive me. Someone, I don't know who, has written out an opinion of a critic of mine, one Meyer, and left it here under my plate. I know it is none of my staff. And of course, not my British brothers. Someone has gone to the trouble of copying out of their own hand Meyer's prognostication that modern war inevitably produces stalemate and millions of dead. The families of soldiers will grow tired of seeing the armies marking time without advancing. It is this that will put an end to the campaign. Captain de Beery, do you think this is a true forecast of what has happened in the last few years? It has a certain limited validity. It is easy to be right in the privacy of one's own study. Stuart. Could you call in the chef and his assistant and the wine waiter immediately? Would you uh, like us to excuse ourselves? Please, my friends, you must not leave the table. This will quickly be attended to. Yes, sir. And you? Yes. Yes, I grew up there. Does it need only six men to make peace? Yes. It takes millions to fight a war. And a few delegates can end it. For Christ's sake, spare us the peasant wisdom. I think the guns have stopped. We have half an hour of ceasefire. Let's hope so. military journals? No, Marshal. Uh, I know the crepes were a little too dry around the edges. Crepes? I'm not worried about crepes. I want to know, do you read military journals? I went to the age of ten. I'm afraid I was never much of a reader. You? Uh, no, sir. Have you lost sons in the war? One. I only had one. Four daughters. He was killed. Ages ago. Atwa, July 1915, I think. You? I have two dead sons, sir. Do you feel bitter about it? They were both missing, thought dead. So we hoped. There's no bitterness while you're busy hoping. By the time there was no more hope, a lot of other people had lost boys. You? I lost my own son, you know. My daughter is a widow. 
We all recognize the huge and necessary sacrifice in this new kind of war. If anything like this appears in my presence again, I will have you all, everyone, charged and interned in a military prison. You know I have the power. Without trial, mind you. My displeasure is your trial. Go back now to your work. If Maya was right, it was out of a flaw of character. A flaw of character doesn't show up in military journals. But by God, it shows up in battle. In battle, the moral stature of the commander is the deciding issue. No one denies that. the German delegates. Yes. Trumpeter, go back. But there are only ten minutes of ceasefire. Go on, back. Back your line. Pardon my saying this, but we must not look confused or lose our dignity. Thank you. Very valuable. If there's anything the French respect us for, it is our composure. Jesus. Herzberger? I am Herr Herzberger. Major Bonbon Bousset. I am to accompany you to the meeting place. I see. Where exactly are we going? I am not permitted to say. Please, follow me. Excuse, Excuse me, me sir. sir. Is the war over? I hope it is, yes. I hope so. I don't know. Somewhere. Napoleon the Third. 
an imperial carriage. Foch's idea, I expect. If he's trying to remind us of 1870, that's certainly in character for him. The man's obsessed with the Franco-Prussian War. This is what passes for subtlety, I suppose. Gallic wit. Well, I think I'll sleep in the plush tonight. Yes. Why not? tell you, Alfred, they hire detectives to find out such things about me. Ah, but you'd like to have a mistress if you could. This isn't very profitable talk. Paula doesn't satisfy you, does she? Shut up. You have no mistress. So you come on a flirtation with a great whore, history. Go to sleep. Excuse me. Where are we, please? I don't know, sir. I'm from the north. I don't know. Excuse me. Hear the guns. We must be about a hundred kilometers from the front. Yes. They all say they don't know where we are. Yes, I know they do. They're lying. Of course. What's that? Legion of Honor. I got it when I was stationed in Paris. It may not go unnoticed. Find your names on the table.
battle injury, Captain? Oh, uh, a fall here, I suppose. Down a companionway. And uh, nothing can be done for it? No, my spine was injured. Ah. It happened while we were in dock. Oh, it's uh, very unfortunate. Their seats aren't labelled. Four places. Who? Haig, Foch, an American politician, probably. The King of the Belgians, perhaps. But admirals. There must be British admirals. Don't worry. At least it's comforting to know that we are in the position of being envoys. And boys have total immunity. On Heldorf, stand up. Credentials, please. The moment our papers of authority, Herr Ratzberger. The Marshal and Lord Weems will withdraw to examine the credentials. And no delegate can sit at the table until he's been accepted. In addition, the Marshal gives permission for you to remove that without asking how you got it. Let them stew for a bit. Do you think it's wrong of me to delay things? Well, no, I wouldn't go so far. It will get us better times in the end. More lives have been saved than lost while a man smokes a pipe. Do you ever go in for a pipe? No, I'm, uh, I'm used to tailor-made. Turkish? Hmm, that's right. This is North African. Strong. But I like its smell. Yes, very aromatic. We, um, we mustn't forget those. What? Those papers, the accreditations. Right. Darling Nora, by the time you receive this, the news it carries will be public knowledge. The German delegates are in front of me at this moment. They represent the final cowardice of that empire. None of their notorious leaders have come to face us. Instead, their foreign office is represented by a second-class diplomat who's held middling posts throughout his career. The head of their delegation is an ex-trade unionist who is now a minister without portfolio. Their naval representative is a mere captain of that great imperial fleet. Nonetheless, I feel the heavy onus of being placed here by God and Britain with the responsibility of balancing demands for proper precautions against mere lust for vengeance. I believe Neverson's Pentecost as a descent by the Holy Spirit of wisdom upon mere men been so necessary. proposals for an armistice. I have no proposals to make. But we wish to inquire as to the conditions under which the Allies would agree to an armistice. I have no conditions to propose. 
I'm here to answer you if you require an armistice. Do you require an armistice? If you do, I can acquaint you with the terms. I cannot make them myself. That is the work of the governments I represent. Acquaint us with your terms. Very well, then. These are the main clauses. The details are in your documents. You will find maps showing the present situation of the war and boundaries relating to the conditions of the armistice. One, immediate evacuation of the invaded countries, Belgium, France, Luxembourg. Two, the evacuation of Alsace-Lorraine to be completed within 14 days from the armistice. Three, evacuation by the German armies of the districts on the left bank of the Rhine. These districts will be controlled by the Allied and United States armies of occupation. Allied garrisons shall hold the principal crossings of the Rhine, that is Mainz, Koblenz, Cologne, together with bridgeheads across the river 30 kilometers deep. Four, evacuation of all German forces operating in Africa. Five, 5,000 railway locomotives and 150,000 wagons in good working order shall be delivered to the associated powers within 31 days. Six, the upkeep of the troops of occupation in the Rhine district shall be charged to the German government. Seven, reparation shall be made for damage done. Eight, naval clauses. The following German surface warships shall forthwith be disarmed and thereafter interned, namely six battle cruisers, 10 battleships, eight light cruisers, 50 destroyers of the most modern style. All submarines to be surrendered at ports to be designated by the Allies. Nine, the existing blockade shall continue. All merchant ships found at sea are to remain liable to capture. Well? I must, of course, seek your permission to communicate with the Imperial Chancellor through GHQ and Spa. Of course. My staff will arrange your courier safe conduct and provide him with maps of our requirements in the Rhineland. You are free to radio your Chancellor to tell him so. Bridgeheads they want. Do they take in Wuppertal? Well, I don't know. It'll be on the map. I knew a very fine family once in Wuppertal. It's the blockade that most concerns me. I think it's barbaric. We must persuade them to lift that blockade. From the War Ministry, the Italian government insists that Bavarian troops 
evacuate the Tyrol. Put it on the agenda. This is just basket weaving this to keep ourselves occupied. They won't give an inch. Look, we have to produce a document of some kind. We must have something by noon tomorrow, Alfred. Well, I'm off to bed. A point, sir. Does our consent to the terms have to be unanimous? What exactly do you mean? I've decided I cannot consent to the naval clauses. Good night. Well, the Chancellor will tell you to sign. The German people feel they've been betrayed. I have a four-year-old son. What sort of name do you think I'll give him? Somebody has to take responsibility and sign. The son of a traitor. Look, abstain if you want to, but I would be grateful if you'd try and remember your responsibility as a delegate. It's hardly fair to bring up what happened this morning. I don't give a damn about your tears. Abstain if you want to. It's different for you. You're privileged. We're just paying for it now. Privileged? Why should I pay like you? Look, abstain if you want to. Stay in your cabin. I'll explain your absence. But please, don't give us any trouble. I did not think my stand would be treated with such contempt. Thank you, Herr Erzberger, for showing me what you think I'm worth. Go to hell. the delays involved if you were to have an accident. A man has to have an outlet sometime. I must insist on more cooperation, Alfred. Oh, don't be so high and mighty, Matthias. Just behave, damn you. Why don't you go to bed, you jumped up peasant? This damn political record of yours. All oh, right, so you made your name by speaking out against colonial atrocities when nobody else dared to. That's just a measure of your limitless ambition, Matthias, isn't it? Are you drunk? What were you, 30, 31? Those atrocities set you up for life. You're drunk. Go to bed. actually asking for us to surrender 2,000 airplanes when we only have 1,700. I'll make a breakdown of that. Alfred, I'm mourning my good friend the 20th century. Like all youngsters about to turn his toes up in his 18th year. Alfred, behave yourself for God's sake. We're being observed the whole time, you know. Go to hell. My behavior, your behavior. Behavior cease to be of importance. Alfred, if you don't stop drinking like this, 
I shall have you barred from discussions. Please, my Belling, this is monstrous. The waiters will report anything that happens here. Please sit down. I saw a horse commit suicide once. Never seen such a thing before or since. Um, this was off the South African coast. Columbine Point was the name of the place. This would be uh, during your war with the Boers, huh? That's right. Mm. A troop ship had run on the rock at uh, Columbine Point in foul weather. Yes? Well, I could see you saw us on the deck shooting the horses in case they broke loose from their deck stalls and ran wild. And finally, one of them broke free, jumped to railing to get into the sea. It was washed to the rocks and back again at least a dozen times. Each time it threw its head, quite deliberately, at an outcrop. And finally, it managed what it wanted. I saw its body go loose and its blood colouring the water. An ominous thing, a horse killing itself. Amazing. But that's astounding. Never seen that. Not in all my years as a garrison officer of horse artillery. I've never seen it either. Not even in battle or under the whip. If a horse could take it into its head to kill itself, what rider would be safe? Well, I can assure you my story is true, General. It's not random table talk. Oh, I didn't mean to suggest that. But uh, suicide is uh, the last act of the non-acceptance of pain. It has always seemed to me that only man has the arrogance to commit it. Perhaps you should remember that next time you tell the story. I'm aware of the temperament of the horse, General. I've also had a long time to consider what I saw at Columbine Point. And excellently reported it was, too. smell the whiff of rejection already. I'm certain it will do something. It's only to smooth the edges a little. We have their submissions, eh? They're waiting in the conference room. I've glanced through it. Much what we expected. Of course. I don't suppose they'll shoot me for wandering about. As you wish. The issues you raise are excellently put and perfectly understood. But the Allied Command can offer you no satisfaction in their regard. Is that the end of the discussion? It would seem so. A detailed written reply will, however, be handed to you as soon as possible. soldiers consider the question of futility. If everything a soldier does in peace is futile. And in war, the odds mount in favor of futility. You shouldn't talk that way. 
You're a Prussian. What a puerile man you are. This may be of interest to you, sir. The Kaiser has abdicated. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Scheidemann has announced a republic at noon yesterday. A republic? Yes. Standing now. With any luck, it means we're off the hook. It says the Kaiser and all his sons have fled the country. The King of Bavaria has abdicated. Could Eisner has taken the cabinet over? God Almighty, what a list. We have come to tell you something of what has happened since you left Spa. Did uh, General Gröner send you? Not in an official sense. We volunteered to come. May I see your document? Certainly. They look like a death squad. Yes. Makes you wonder just who the enemy is, doesn't it? <clears throat> Sit down, then. Well, gentlemen. And, uh, what can you tell us? <clears throat> we were in Spa when the Kaiser abdicated. He really believed that he could still inspire his men by joining them at the front. Dying with them, perhaps. When Gröner told him the result of the regimental officer, that did it. At about one o'clock, the Kaiser agreed to abdicate as King of Prussia and went off to lunch. When the Kaiser's abdication was announced in Berlin, Scheidemann panicked and proclaimed a republic. So the Crown Prince was deposed as well. Are you the sort of young Turks who wanted to fight to the end? It isn't the year for that, sir. Did uh, Gröner... Did he mention us? Our standing? Does the Republic intend to appoint new delegates? General Gröner said nothing of it. Doesn't he understand our situation here? We have told you all that we are empowered to. If it leaves you more in the dark than you were yesterday, well, that's the condition of all of us. Well, you'd better go and take some coffee, gentlemen. We'll talk again later.
simple soldiers, circumspect, respectful to their government representatives, oh yes, no political ambitions, oh no, honest mechanics of the killing machine, canny as a river rats. I think you've said too much. There are two conclusions we must draw now. One, that the new government want an armistice signed, they haven't said otherwise. And two, that they feel they have the power to implement it. Well, that's how it seems to me. Yes, we must wait to hear news. I know the armistice conditions will be with them in Berlin. mother, you know. Really. Who gives a damn if she lacks a bit of style? Your children won't care. My mother had style. She really had style. She used to visit us once a day. That was her style. It was like a visit to the colonies for her. It lasted ten minutes, if we were lucky. My older brother, Eric. We had a nanny who used to get epileptic fits. She would have a seizure and fall to the floor. And Eric would cut her ankles with a penknife. He used the knife on my little sister, Alex. One night. He was whittling away at one of those pegged dolls we'd all had as children. And he simply stood up and put the knife into Alex's stomach. And he cut downwards. But she was lucky. She lived, scarred. My mother hushed it up. I suppose all your life you fought to have the same advantages as me. Now you can see what my advantages were. And your brother? My mother sent him to a military academy. But even the insanity of that kind of place wasn't enough to cover him. When he was 15, he ended up in a lunatic asylum. You know Inga left me, Matthias. Your wife? No. I've never been very lucky with my women. Thank you.
one that an answer, but not one they can read. Give it all away, it says. Anything they ask. The German government accepts the conditions of the armistice communicated to it November 8. Uncoded. You have to remember, those men like Abert and Scheidemann have been prophesying revolution for 40 years. Now the day's come and they're frightened shitless. Show the others, will you? They're like fat curates at the second coming of Christ. They'll be guilty of a lot more silliness before they finish. We cannot accept responsibility for this. Why do I feel oddly depressed, George? Don't say that, sir. It's the flatulence that comes when you're given too much too early. That man's slow character, pathetic. Would you like a drink, sir? Mm, thank you, yes, I'll have a small brandy. This is the second night I missed in the war. I wouldn't do it now if it weren't the last night of all. It's not bad. It's not bad. This is where we pay for our little vanities, eh? We'll never be the same men again. Our wives won't recognize us. Have you come to tell us that you are ready to sign? There is information you must have first. Simple information. Otherwise, there will be no reality to our talks. Very well. On the basis that the figures you've given to us are reliable, let us write 5,000 motor lorries in clause 7. Please do not ask for a further amelioration in that area. There will be none. And I want the war to stop tomorrow. Agreed? I am required to ask for time extensions in all directions, in particular in the matter of time allowed for the evacuation of the army. I agree with General von Winterfeld's protest. There may be room for a small extension. Essential you arrange territorial sovereignty of the East Berlin Cycle Club. Also, the question of the number of aeroplanes must be discussed. That is settled. The complete Air Force. I would like to come now to the subject of the continuing blockade. It's the most important point of all. Now, there is an acute shortage of foodstuffs in our cities. There are as many as one and a half million children with rickets. The weight of children of one year is down by nearly a third. The figures are before you. Now, I know that it is not your purpose any more than it is ours to wage war on such people. In their name, I say that there is, there is no justice in a continued blockade. Anyone can talk of innocence. I can talk of innocence. You say there's no justice. You sank our ships without discrimination and you say there's no justice. My God, you're hot, you fellows. I should also speak of the thousands of vagabond children. 20,000 in Berlin. Dear me, we shall have Peter the Hermit next. You sank our ships, sir. Everyone's ships. Do I talk to you of the child corpses of the Lusitania? These figures, Herr Erzberger. Do you have any official documents to certify them? They are from memory. Do you have any official document to certify your memory? You force me to say that my memory is a byword in the Reichstag. The political section might be able to inform you of that fact. Well, you look pretty sleek to me, Herr Etzberger. Your colleagues' observations mention citizens of Berlin who manage to eat only 100 grams of meat a week. This uh, statistic, I would venture to say, does not include you. There is a policy that our best hotels and nightclubs are supplied with food as a propaganda measure so that uh, visitors to the country, influential Swedes, for example, will feel that this abundance is typical of the country as a whole. 
Well, the advertising has succeeded a little too well in your case. We all know that we belong to a class of people who manage to get food even in extreme circumstances. If Britain were today in the same position as Germany, I would not expect to see the first sea lord emaciated. <laughs> We do not know what the situation in Germany is, and we do not believe that you necessarily have a clear concept. We're prepared to deal with famine. The British War Cabinet has detailed 100,000 tons of British shipping to carry foodstuffs to the North German ports. Foodstuffs? Powdered milk and eggs, flour, canned and frozen meats. Canned meats. And we shall continue to ferry foodstuffs until the need passes, so I will not tolerate talk of innocents dying. Innocents come readily to hand whenever a military nation runs into problems. Powdered eggs? We need our rolling stock. You can't distribute powdered eggs in a hand cart, you know. Not from Hamburg to Munich, not a chance. You do not believe that the children are innocent? I didn't say that. Well, the question is, how much longer will they remain innocent children? You are imposing make punishment, not the terms of an armistice. You are at liberty to refuse and reject the terms. You are making the same mistake as our government made this spring with regard to Russia. We considered ourselves in a position to behave as conqueror. Well, time has taken its revenge. You may come to bitterly regret what has happened here tonight. Well, I think that completes the discussion. Since the German fleet was not defeated on the high seas, surely it should not be completely disarmed, interned, confiscated. The Navy is a settled matter. The final documents. You will all sign both copies of the agreement. There will be no abstention. Admiral Weems and I alone will sign for the Allies. We shall count it five o'clock, gentlemen. The armistice will operate from 11. Before we finish, I would like to record something. Very well. Calling attention to our repeated written and oral protests, the undersigned plenipotentiaries Regard it furthermore as our duty to insist that the execution of this agreement can drive the German people into anarchy and famine. Considering the discussions leading to the armistice, President Wilson's peace initiative, we might have hoped for conditions that would have brought an end to the suffering of non-combatants, of women and children, 
at the same time that it assured the enemy full and complete military security. The German people, which held up a world of enemies for 50 months, will preserve their liberty and their unity despite every kind of violence. A nation of 70 millions of people suffers, but it will not die. Thank you. After resolutely repulsing all the assaults of the enemy, you have won the greatest victory in history and rescued the most sacred of all causes, the liberty of the world. You will not edit this vaccine, not a word. Very well, sir. Now to continue. Posterity reserves its gratitude for you. Uh, what does posterity do, Weems? Should we say it will reserve? Mm, well, now, that's a question. Posterity does not exist at the moment. It will exist in 10 or 20 years, but not now. However, sir, posterity as a noun is the present name for a future reality. When that reality arrives, it will no longer be posterity, but will go by other nouns. Yes? Uh, I begin to see. Posterity has existence in the present as an abstract frame. I would not want to make an error of grammar. No. So, posterity reserves is correct? Yes, exactly. My encyclopedia. Marshal, gentlemen. Well, don't you think? Tomorrow they'll pick up some other divinity. It's a republic now. No more divinities. Can you really believe you're going home to a republic? I see these things. I see them with an outsider's eyes, because my wife is French and an intelligent woman. They used to make her drink beer on Wednesday mess nights. Like a fat frau.